Um, the music group that was here this year, The Walking Roots, the words to the chorus of one of their songs was, don't, put any, don't plant roses outside my window. I can't see the blooms when I feel the thorns. But I keep walking through the night looking for the light. Almost out of words again. Those who know me, well, <clears throat> that's what this whole past month, week has been like. It feels like walking through the thorns, walking through the dark, and looking for the light. On Thursday, Wilma saw her light, Thursday morning. For us yesterday, we saw the light. And uh, I was telling Kent that um, when you put me in front of a microphone, it's rare that I'll be out of words, but we'll try. Um, as I think about, thought about the uh, events of yesterday and Friday, the whole week, I, uh, I'm a 100% gospel New Testament person, and yet I like to go back and read in the Old Testament, and especially in Kings. There are some accounts in there, some stories in there, and I read them, and I scratch my head and wonder just what in the world do they mean? And uh, one of those is um, I thought about uh, last night after we were home, showered, ate some food, and had my feet up. And I thought about the, the uh, account in 2 Kings chapter 4. And uh, this is the woman whose husband had perished, had died, and uh, they were left without many resources, and her sons were in danger of being taken as slaves for the debt that they had. So she went to Elisha, and Elisha said um, this, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars, and don't ask for just a few. Then go inside, shut the door, behind you and your sons and pour oil into all the jars because all she had was a small jar of oil as their last, one of their last resources. Pour jar oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons and they brought jars to her and she kept pouring. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, well, bring me another one. And they replied, there's not a jar left. The oil stopped flowing. Almost every, well, yeah, not, yeah almost every relief sale that we have had, and that I've been the, had the honor and privilege to uh, serve as the chairperson of that, it's been kind of like that. At, when we come to the end of the release sale, come to a Sunday, we hear the Saturday night, hear the results. And sometimes I think about, well, what if we'd had a few more jars? Put a few more, you know? What if we had just a few more? And um, when I got the results, you know, yesterday during the day, Friday, Saturday, uh, some people said to me, well, it doesn't look like quite so many people going around. And yet I walked into the food pantry, the food service area around five or six o'clock, and they were just scrambling to keep up. They were selling more food at a faster rate than they'd ever had on a Friday. Um, Saturday during the auction, um, I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the prices that were going, things were going for, except the loaf of bread that went for what, twenty-one, twenty-two hundred dollars or something like that? which is like double what it normally gets. Um, but I heard this $1,000 and $2,000 being asked for on some of the items, and wow, you know, it's kind of just, well, things are going good. And uh, when I got the email from Mary Handrich, our new treasurer last night, um, in it, it said that, Blessing bids, one of the things that's near and dear to my heart, were up over $4,000 from what they had been last year, and I was 
glad to hear that. And then she said that the quilts auction, the quilt portion of it, those 180 items that we had for quilts was up, up, not just at, up $24,000 from the last year. Wow. Almost all the, almost all of the um, booths were up, if not all of them. So all the details are not out yet, not all the numbers and calculated and everything as well. Uh, Edie, Kyle, and Mary calculated and punched numbers well into the night. And um, the final number is not final. This is a very preliminary number, but it's around $200,000. Amazing. Um, you heard me say it last Sunday, and the other people have heard me say it over and over again, that this is not, God, not, not our sale, it's God's sale. Um, we don't control the weather. We don't control people who come. We don't control their pocketbooks and how generous they want to be. Thank you, God. Um, he has, makes happen what he wants to happen. Um, some of you know, remember, realize that this is my last rodeo uh, as chair. It's been a pleasure to do that, to be able to, um, on days like today, to see all the faces, uh, smiles of encouragement all along, to be up on the auction stage and taking blessing bids and see number after number after number come up to donate not to buy anything, but just to donate. I guess I better use this since I brought it up here. So, um, yeah, there are times when it felt some thorny things along the way. Things are difficult. Things are hard. And yet, every year, at the end of the week, boom, there's this big bright light of the results. And uh, just thank you all. Um, as I am stepping back, other people have stepped forward. Um, we're asking a few more people to step forward and fill in some of the other positions and roles and such in the process. Um, but all of you and lots and lots of people from all over the place in northern Michigan uh, play their part. And just like with the body, if just a couple of cells, you know, Lowell Eastman is in the, where is he? He, he, you know, he's in the hospital. Some of the cells in the back of his neck, whatever, aren't cooperating. So every little piece of our body, every little piece and person who takes part in the relief sale plays a part. And every bit of it is special. Uh, I have, for every year, I've enjoyed watching and seeing all the runners. And I've been around there long enough to see some of the runners get from this high to this high. And, uh, and some of them, their hair has gone from darker color to kind of like my color. And uh, to see that, to see that progression. So I think, you know, there's too many people to thank, so I'm not gonna get into that. But just thank you all for every part and piece that you do. And um, we're gonna give thanks for this um, amazing result. And the, if you need the words, in the red books, it's hymn 606. In the blue books, it's hymn 118. Praise God from whom all heaven. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh.
I have a quick word from us. Um, you may be seated, sorry, I'm a little distracted. Uh, Lowell and I do want to thank you for your many kindnesses last week in the service. Uh, your welcoming in an extra special way to his transitioning uh, towards a full-time pastor here at the church. And we are very thankful for you, for your affirmation and your encouragement and your kindnesses to us this week as he has been diagnosed with some sort of a pocket of fluid in the back of his neck that is causing him some extreme pain. He is still in the hospital in Grayling. Um, he wanted me to be here with you today, and if I were here there with him, he would be grumpy. So I'm here. It makes him happier. And um, he did want you to know that he is praising God this morning and wants you to know he is praying for the body as well. Um, he is currently receiving IV antibiotics to hope that reduces that pocket of fluid. And please continue to pray for him and for us, for the doctors and for patients as we wait and trust God. And Jubal's gonna continue with the rest of announcements and prayer time. So I have a, a number of announcements here for us this morning. First, Wilma. Sorry. A little low. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. So Wilma will be having a memorial service for, for her as she passed this last week. Uh, that will be August 27th at 11 a.m. Uh, there will be a visitation before and a luncheon after. I'm sure that will continue to be out there until that event happens. Some of you may have not heard or have heard that Troy Ross's father, Larry, passed away Saturday morning. And so Troy actually has a word that he wanted to say about that. First of all, I would like to thank everybody for the prayers. Um, again, an amazing community praying for somebody that I don't really know, but um, they called in the hospice a week ago, and um, when I went down just for a visit on Thursday, we found that he had declined, and then over the last couple of days, declined steadily, but in peace. Um, he did not struggle. Yesterday morning, I was going in and got there at 8.30, or anybody else, and uh, he had already passed. So he passed uh, relatively quickly and peacefully, so we thank God for that. But I want to thank you for um, all the prayers and concern and um, talks that everybody's had with me, and uh, just really appreciate it. Um, yesterday I was supposed to be helping out with the sausage, so I would like to uh, thank all the people that stepped up kind of in, without a lot of warning for that. Um, I do appreciate that. That took a load off me. Um, I especially, I shouldn't say especially, but uh, appreciate the, the thought that there's a lot of our younger uh, young men that stepped up in that time, and that's something I've been looking forward to and didn't get a chance to see, but I do appreciate everybody that uh, put in that extra help. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. So Pam Handrich's brother, Gary, has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer as well. Um, so we need to be in prayer for him. Dan Kaufman's brother-in-law, many of you may know Joe Arbaugh. He's uh, been diagnosed with, if I can say this right, esoph esophageal? Es esophageal cancer. Yes. Uh, and then Another announcement from Lisa Alderman, her niece Kim, who is on hospice care and she's asking for prayer for the family to experience God's love and to know what that he's there and, and that he's, he's caring for them during this, this difficult time. Another announcement, Sherry McKenzie's daughter and baby have a praise report that uh, the blood work came back with normal results, but we also need to continue to be in prayer for them for an upcoming ultrasound regarding possible physical abnormalities. Um, an update on Lynn Hoberton to, to continue to be in prayer for her as her knees and wrists have been causing considerable pain for her. Um, and then finally a praise for Ron's lung, they look clear and he's feeling 
much better and, and breathing well. Um, but we'll move into a, a time of prayer for these different announcements. So there's just a, a lot of a lot of loss that has happened over this last week. We have to celebrate the relief sale and everything that that came with that. But there's been some difficult times for a lot of families as well. And so we just want to spend an extra amount of time in, in prayer for these families and for the community and and the blessing of this relief sale, the funds that were gained there as well. So let's spend some time in prayer. God, we, we come before you just so thankful for the blessing that you've given us here in this community, in this church of the, the relief sale, and, and the fact that we as a community can come together with other churches and communities all around Michigan, sometimes all around the United States, people come to, to help and serve, and, and that we can be a light that shines in that time, God, that that sale can, can bring these funds in that can go and, and preach your gospel all around the world through the, the use of, of different medical supplies or food or water or any number of things, God. And we pray that you would bless those funds, that they would be used to, to serve you in that way. God, we have so many in the community in, in these announcements of, of sick and, and dying and, and all of these these issues that we face, God. And so we just want to bring these all before you. We want to bring just the family of, of Wilma as they have have now lost her, God. We know that she was ready to go and we were thankful that you have brought her home, God, but there's still a, a hole that's left there. And so we pray for her family that they would be able to handle this loss, that they would be able to see your grace and your goodness through this, God, that you have, have held her for all these years and now you hold her with you in heaven, God. And we thank you for that. We pray that you would be with Troy and, and his family as they experience the loss of his father, God. We, no, one's, no one's ever ready for that. And we pray that, that you would just wrap your loving arms around him and then us, us as a community would come around him as well, God. And, just lift him up and encourage him and, and allow him to, to grieve this loss. We know that it can be difficult, but we know that you are the great comforter and that you will hold us even through these difficult times. Pray for, for healing for Lowell as he is experiencing this time in the hospital. We, we don't know exactly what healing looks like for him with this condition, God, but we pray that you would bring it about, that you would reduce the pain that he's experiencing and that you would allow his body just to know how to heal itself or allow the doctors to know what to do in order to to heal him we thank you for his willingness in serving this church god and pray that we would continually be in prayer for him even while he might not be sick in, in the hospital but as a leader in this church that he would be prayed for regularly that he could lead with your guidance and and the spirit would would allow him to lead where you would have him him lead us. We pray that you'd be with Pam Handrich's brother Gary, God, that you would just bring healing to this cancer that he's been diagnosed with, God. And we know that it can be difficult and it's very difficult on a family to get a diagnosis like that. So we pray for your comfort and your healing in that, that they would know how to treat such a thing and that they would uh, just be able to, to see you working through any different situation that comes their way, God. Pray that, that you'd be with Joe Arbaugh as he's also been diagnosed with cancer, God. We know that he's experienced some different health issues prior to this and, and now this is, is just adding on to that, God. So we pray for your divine healing, that you would work through the doctor's hands, that you would work through the spirit, that that you would comfort him and that you would draw him to yourself, God, that he would know who you are and he would experience your love. Pray that you would be with Lisa Alderman's niece as she's in hospice care, God, and for the whole family around her, that they would experience uh, the comfort that you can bring, that they would experience the love that you have, that you would show yourself, reveal yourself to them through these difficult times that they would come to, to know you and love you, God. And we just praise you for the report we got from Sherry McKenzie's daughter and, and baby, God, that, 
that things came back looking good, but we continue to pray for continued healing and, and any possible abnormalities that may be coming or looking in the future, God, that you would be divine, that you would draw that situation where you would have it go and that it would be used to glorify you, God. And we pray for Lynn Hoberton and her family as she continues just to experience pain and, and discomfort, God. We know that you can heal, and we, we pray that this experience that she has would be used to to serve you in whatever way you desire for it to do. We know that that you use all sorts of ways to bring about your your will, and we pray that whatever it is that you would bring it about and that you would just allow Lynn to feel your loving arms around her as well, God. Finally, we, we praise you for Ron's healing in his lungs, God, that everything looks good there. We, we thank you for him and his... Uh, being in our community, and we pray that you would continue to, to work on him and, and love him and that he would draw near to you as well, God. We thank you for this week you've blessed us all with, and we pray that you would just continue to, to comfort those in need and in lost, and we pray that you would uh, just allow us to draw near to you, even through difficult times, but that we would feel your love around us, God. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Here we got a mic for you, Erie. That is really noisy, sort of. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your disease sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. You stand and let's sing of the many reasons we have to praise his holy name. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger, your name is great and your heart is kind, for all your and reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. 
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will breathe the days unending. Ten thousand years and then forever. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name, worship your holy name, Lord, I'll worship your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Don't. 